What's up guys? Welcome back to an episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's episode we're going to cover part two of my DIY solar system for under 3,000. Now if you haven't seen the first video, that's a detailed parts list of everything that I used. But in today's video, we're going to talk about understanding the relationship between watts, amps, and volts. And we're going to go over a detailed instruction on how to wire your solar panels. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below so that you can check out the first video if you haven't already seen it. But before we get started, hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so how much solar do you need? Well, you can figure that out one of two ways. Either you can take a look at your bill, or if you know exactly how much power you're using from your mining rig, that should give you some idea. Now, taking a look at my bill, this one is for my shop, and it has about half of my mining farm in there at the moment, and you can see that last month I used 1,915 kilowatt hours. Now, if you're not familiar with the term kilowatt hours as opposed to kilowatts, to understand the difference, essentially all that a kilowatt hour is, is watts times how many hours. So for example, if your mining rig used 1,000 watts for one hour continuously, that would be one kilowatt hour. There are 24 hours in a day, and that would give you 24 kilowatt hours per day. So my mining farm is currently using about 4,000 watts continuously for 24 hours, which is equivalent to 96 kilowatt hours per day. 96 kilowatt hours times 30 days in a month gives you 2,880 kilowatt hours. 2,880 kilowatt hours times my current kilowatt hour price of 13 cents is equal to $374 per month. Now, if you watch my previous video, you would know that I have about 7,500 watts worth of solar panels but my inverter only outputs 6,000 watts. Now we can say on a good day, we're probably gonna get about six hours of sunlight per day, which is gonna give us 36,000 watts or 36 kilowatt hours. Now 36 kilowatt hours times 0.13 or 13 cents per kilowatt hour is equal to $4.68 per day and that equals $140.40 per month. So you should have a pretty good understanding of how to calculate your kilowatt hour usage, but let's talk about how to wire your solar panels and the different options that you have. And in order to understand that, we should cover some basics. So if you don't know this, watts is equal to your amps times your volts or to put it another way, your amps equals watts divided by volts, or volts equals watts divided by amps. So you have two options for wiring your solar panels. One is gonna be parallel, and the other one is going to be series. When you parallel wires, essentially what you're doing is you're running a negative to the other negative, and a positive to the other positive. When you do this, what you're going to do to calculate is add your amps, but remember that your voltage is going to stay the same. So if you have a solar panel that is 36 volts at eight amps, what you would do in parallel is you would add your amps. So eight plus eight equals 16 amps times your voltage, which stays the same at 36 volts, that equals 576 watts. Now looking at series, what you're doing is you're taking a negative from one solar panel and connecting it to the positive of the other solar panel, and you are left over with a negative and a positive. The big difference here is instead of adding your amps, you're going to be adding your volts, and the amps are going to stay the same. So in this case, 36 volts plus 36 volts equals 72 volts, and we're gonna multiply that by our amps, which is eight, and that's also going to give us the same number of 576 watts. Now, 
You'll notice, of course, that the watts stay the same. How we got there was a little bit different. But what is very important to know when you are installing your own solar panel system is what type of voltage and amperage that your inverter can handle. Now, if you've watched the previous video, you would know that I'm not supposed to exceed 550 volts. And so I'm trying to get as close to that as possible without exceeding it. Now here's an example of 14 solar panels in series. So you'll notice we have a positive to a negative, positive to a negative, and so on. And if these are 36 volts at 8 amps each, what we're going to end up with is 504 volts at 8 amps, which is 4,032 watts. Now what I'm going to have whenever I am done is two strings of 14 each. Okay, so what we're going to do with these positive and negatives that are left over is connect them into the MPPT inputs. Now my inverter has two separate inputs and it's very important to know what voltage ranges are on each one of them. In my case, they are both up to 550 volts. So, we're not going to end up with 1,008 volts. We're going to end up with 504 per MPPT input. Okay, so here's a couple of pictures of the installation of the inverter. This is the inside of my shop, right next to my breaker box. Forgive the mess, guys. It's a shop. It's dirty. What can I say? Um, but yes, that's black piece that you see sitting on the shelf. It's just a piece of steel. I wanted to have something sturdy to mount it to, and this is bolted directly to that steel. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to give me a nice flat surface to mount the inverter. And you want to make sure that this thing is mounted perfectly level, both horizontally and vertically. There's some pretty detailed instructions in the user manual about not allowing the inverter to lean too far forward or past 15 degrees, probably for heat distribution purposes. But as you can see, it's pretty level there. I did have to use a little spacer towards the bottom to make sure that it wasn't leaning too far. And the next picture we have is a picture of the SO cable where you're going to plug in your uh, line, your neutral, and your ground. Now, you want to make sure that those connections are tightened down all the way. Give a little tug, make sure that those wires aren't coming out, make sure you don't have too much bare wire showing. And in the next uh, little, we got a little video here. After it was mounted, we've got our SO cable running directly into the breaker box. We've got the ground connected to the bus bar. We've got our line and our neutral going directly into the breaker, which in this case is a 50 amp breaker that is 220 volts. And I'll give you a little shot here of the back side of it once again. You can see my little spacer down there at the bottom to make sure that it's level because that, even though that is a piece of steel, it does have quite a bit of weight resting on it. And again, you wanna make sure that that thing does not lean further than 15 degrees forward. So now that we've got the inverter mounted and our SO cable hooked up, the next thing is to finish mounting the solar panels and to run all of those connections into the building, make sure we have our shutoff switch. And it won't be too long from now, guys. I'm hoping to get some help this weekend and get all of that stuff mounted so that we can move on to part three of the video. Okay, so let's wrap up the video with return on investment. Now, if you watched the first video, you would know that I spent about 2,900 total on this system. And with best case scenario, I'd be getting about $140 back per month from my electric provider, which puts me at a return on investment of 21.37 months or 1.78 years. Now, I don't consider that realistic. Uh, I would be very excited to see this thing hit return on investment within three years. But so far from all of the videos that I've watched and the studying that I've done, uh, hitting return on investment in three years on a solar system is outstanding. And if you have a higher electric rate than mine at 13 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, you could do even better with this system. So 
That being said, I hope that you guys stick around for the next video where we cover the installation of the solar panels themselves. And uh, we do a little bit of testing and see what kind of numbers we're going to produce after this thing is all up and running. So if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, hit that like, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys on the next episode.